Hey bros, if you're checking to see if you got a shout out, then watch the video all the way to the end because that's where the shout outs are. What's up guys, today we're gonna be unboxing and reviewing the Nerf Alpha Strike Flight CS10. Here's the front of the box. Here's the back. Let's open it. So in the box, you're gonna get the instruction manual, the gun, one 10 round magazine, and 20 darts. So here's the gun. First I'll go over the basic colors and design of it. It's all yellow. It's got the yellow and black Alpha Strike theme. I think it looks pretty cool. It looks kind of like the End Strike theme. There's a barrel attachment up front, a tactical rail up front on the top, and two sling mounts, both in the front. On the left and right side, we have the Nerf symbol and the Flight CS10, but on the right side it's black, on the left side it's just yellow. And there's also a jam door on top, you just push open like that, it's really simple. Overall, this is definitely a really small gun. If you hold, th hold this up and then hold up another, any other Nerf gun, you can tell this one is definitely designed smaller. But I don't really care, it doesn't really matter too much, it's just that's something I wanted to note out. It has basically the same controls as any flywheel gun. The rev trigger on the bottom to spin the flywheels, the main trigger to shoot the gun, and a magazine release that you just press forward and take the mag out and put it in. Now here's some cool things. The mag well has some holes in it, so you can actually see when the mag goes in, which is cool. Here is a weird thing I found. With most Nerf guns, whenever you put the mag in, you just slide it in. Even if I use the mag it came with, you just slide it in. This Nerf gun does it a little bit differently. I don't know why they chose to do it like this, but they made it where you can't actually just put the mag in. You, what you have to do is push the release forward, and while you're holding it forward, you can put it in like that. I don't know why they chose it to do it like that. It makes it a little bit more impractical to use, but it isn't really much of a big deal. And there probably is a reason for why they did it. Unless I'm just loading it wrong. But, I was, that's kind of like, I don't think you're supposed to do it like that. I can just really quickly check the instruction manual. In the instruction manual, it doesn't say you have to do that. It says just put the mag in. But it seems like it doesn't like to do it that way. You can do it without pressing the mag release. It's just really hard. I don't know why it's like that. Basically, the best way is to hold the mag release and put the mag in like that. Taking it out is normal. It, it locks in like that and you press the mag release and you pull it out. That's normal. And here's one other odd thing I found. And it's not the magazine that's weird, it's actually the gun. So when you put it in, on all Nerf magazines, there's a lip on here, and when you put it in, the lip should be flush with the mag well. Whenever you first put your mag in, you're gonna think maybe you did something wrong because the lip doesn't go flush, but actually that's just how the gun is designed. It sticks out a little bit like that. It's not how the mag is designed, because if I put the mag into a different Nerf gun, you can see the lip does go flush, like that. It's just specifically with this gun. and. It's just some um, something to get used to. It doesn't really matter too much and it doesn't make a difference. I just wanted to point it out. I think the reason they did it like that is because they wanted to make the gun really small. You're probably wondering what this big blob is in the front. And actually this is where the batteries are stored. And just like most Nerf guns, it uses four AA batteries and it doesn't come with any. With most Nerf guns, you need a screwdriver to unscrew uh, the little door to pop open to put the batteries in. You don't need a screwdriver with this gun. And this system, isn't necessarily easier to use, but it definitely is a lot more practical because you don't need a screwdriver at all. Basically, there's this tab here and you push down on it, and then you push this tab backwards, and you can slide the whole thing down. And then you lift the cover up, or down I guess, and then you have access to your battery storage. So you just put in your four batteries, and then you close the cover, and then push it back up. And then, the gun revs up. 
So I hope they change all the electric Nerf guns to this way, because this is a lot cooler. I like that system. On the right side, uh, we just have this plastic here, but on the left side, the stock has a lot of grooves in here. I'm not sure why they did that. I don't think it's for a design because, I mean, it looks better on this side. It may have just been to save plastic, but in a way it's better because it kind of makes it a little bit lighter. So there's that. It does make the gun a little bit front heavy because of the batteries, so it's a little bit imbalanced, but overall the gun is lighter than I guess if it was just completely filled in. And here's another cool thing. Nerf for a long time has just been giving you enough ammo to fill the mag. So normally they just give 10 rounds. They've actually given you 20 rounds with this, which is two mag fills. And that's cool because usually Nerf doesn't give that much ammo. The darts that it comes with are just regular elite darts, but with the Alva Strike coloring. So yellow body, orange tip. If you don't know how to load a Nerf gun, then you just slide the dart in the mag, and then you push the dart down, slide another one until it's full. We have the Nerf Modulus Go Stops uh, chronograph barrel here, and if you don't know what this is, we have a review on this. Basically, you can attach it to a barrel mount on, the normal, on a normal Nerf gun like this, and you can use it to chronograph your darts. So let's turn it on. And let's do a chrono test. I'll shoot just a couple rounds. So that was 71.2. 71.7, 71 71.6, 71.5, 70, 71.2. So this is really consistent. Um, every one was, well, almost all of them were 71. There was one 65, I think, but that was because I wasn't revving it as much. If you rev it up, pretty much all the way and you're just shooting at an average speed, you should have about 70 F or 70 to 71 FPS, which is pretty high. Let's try shooting it now. First, we're gonna test out the accuracy of this by shooting a target from about 20 feet away. Now we're going to try shooting Jackson, who's more of a realistic target from about 30 feet away. Here are my final thoughts. There are only two main things that I don't like. One thing is how you, it's hard to just, you, it's really hard to just slide the mag in. You have to really force it. Um, you have to hold down the mag release and put it in like that to be easy. And the other thing is something I noticed while I was shooting. Sometimes when you're shooting, when you pull the trigger, it locks to the back and it takes like a second until it pops back forward. So it kind of makes it hard to shoot fast and it's just a little bit annoying. And then there's two things that I really do like about this gun. First thing is I really like how they made it where you don't need a screwdriver anymore. You just open the battery tray like this. It's, it makes it just a lot more practical. And the other thing I like about this gun a lot is what I noticed while I was shooting. So most Nerf guns have an electrical lock where you can't actually rev the gun 
if the jam door is open. But this one uh, doesn't have the lock, so you can actually rev the gun while the door is open. And you can actually shoot it while this door is open, and I think that's really cool. Um, most other Nerf guns, you can't do that because they have a lock. Why they have the lock there, I don't know. But they got rid of it on this gun, and I think that's really cool. And even when I pull the trigger with the door open, you can see the pusher moving. And if you don't know what that does, it pushes the darts into the flywheels. If I put this mag in, you can see. Which is cool. Okay, I got it here. You'll notice that I have the trigger back and it gets stuck like, just like this sometimes. And sometimes you have to kind of push it forward like that. I think the main reason for the trigger getting stuck is the pusher actually getting stuck on the dart because maybe um, it, it's maybe the mag is too close to the gun and the spring is uh, too strong or I'm just not exactly sure. But it's, I think uh, the pusher gets stuck on the dart and it creates friction which makes it hard to go back. I wanna say that the two, these two problems with my gun, the trigger getting stuck and the magazine not being able to go in very easily, it could just be with my particular gun. Like maybe I just got a lemon, it's possible, but I, I'm not sure. I don't know if all of them are like this or if I just got unlucky and got a bad one. Overall, I really like this gun, even with the bad parts, just because, of I, just because I like how they have the battery system without the screwdriver now. I think it's really cool. This gun would probably be used best for just regular indoor Nerf Wars that are up close because it's not super accurate or anything. It just has average performance, so it's just good that it's small because it's really good for running around and just shooting people. I have a positive opinion on this gun and I like it. I think it's pretty cool. One more thing I wanted to mention, um, the plastic they use to make the magazine feels actually quite different from the plastic um, they've been using in most of the Nerf magazines. So this is like a regular Nerf magazine, and here it is, and here's the newer one. And it's the same basically design and mold, but you can't obviously feel it yourself because you're not touching it. But whenever I feel it, this plastic definitely feels very different from the older one. And the main difference is that the older one, the plastic just generally seems stiffer or harder. This one is a lot more flexible and it can bend a lot more. That could be a good thing and a bad thing. It could be a good thing because it may be less likely to break since it has more flexibility or it could be more likely to break. I don't actually know. Based off what I've seen so far, these two mags um, perform exactly the same. It doesn't really matter that it's a different plastic. If it works just fine, it works the same. But I just wanted to mention that. All right guys, shout out time. The first shout out goes to Drama Boys. The next shout out goes to Icefire365. The next shout out goes to Cataloy Gomez. The next shout out goes to Murph Mitzer123. The next shout out goes to Zopla Brothers. The next shout out goes to the Blue Penguin. The next shout out goes to PJ Miranda. The next shout out goes to I Like Celicas and Supras. The next shout out goes to Aditya Marwal. The next shout out goes to Cod MW Fan Gamer Dude. The next shout out goes to Dudes Manzano. The next shout out goes to Ghost Wraith. The next shout out goes to Daniel Mendoza. The next shout out goes to Annette Hartley. The next shout out goes to Shafali Kanba. The next shout out goes to Roberto Fatalver. YT2. The next shout out goes to Rosario Esteban. The next shout out goes to Ben Palacio. The next shout out goes to Jaden. The next shout out goes to King Gomez. The next shout out goes to FBI. The next shout out goes to Wars Playing. The next shout out goes to Micah Humphrey. The next shout out goes to Dreadhead Dan. The next shout out goes to Neville Hammond. The next shout out goes to Scruffy. 
The next shout out goes to Reggie UK. The next shout out goes to John Handy. The next shout out goes to Ryan Poon. The next shout out goes to Nerf Time with Dom. The next shout out goes to Sonia Dixon. The next shout out goes to Jeremiah Simmons. The next shout out goes to Joel Mali Vukovic. The next shout out goes to Reading Time. The next shout out goes to Cute FNAF Fan Animation 375 and Game Videos and Vlogs. The next shout out goes to Jake Bloor. The next shout out goes to Bunny Ayuyal David. The next shout out goes to Caleb Burns. The next shout out goes to Cray Zay. The next shout out goes to True Collector 80. The next shout out goes to John Handy. The next shout out goes to Lucas Vampire Like Snakes Height 7 Foot 8 Helpful. The next shout out goes to Lord Navis. The next shout out goes to Trevor. The next shout out goes to Tweaks Gaming. The next shout out goes to Nor Film Channel. The next shout out goes to Papa Kalashnikov. The next shout out goes to Aaron Beasley. The next shout out goes to Chrissy Boy. Hey bros, if you want a shout out, then go to the community tab on our channel and go to the most recent post and type, I want a shout out. If you like this video, be sure to share it with your friends and hit the like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notifications bell. Be happy, peace out.